I miss Overwatch one. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss the original, and yeah. I I hear all the complaints and everything about Overwatch <laughs> 2 as well. Hey everybody, welcome on in to Behind the Voice. I'm joined by Charlotte, who's played D.Va in Overwatch and Overwatch 2. Thank you so much for taking the time, for finally coming here, and I'm excited to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I, I've been <laughs> I've been playing Overwatch 2, Overwatch actually, ever since the game, ever since the demo came out, and I got really, really excited. That was, that was one of the games that I just really wanted to play, and... Just really wanted to buy immediately after the demo. I was like blown away. I was like, I have to buy this. This is the one game I gotta buy. And it's been seven years ever since like that game came out. How it has. What, what do you feel right now? Like it's been so long, you're still attached to the game. It's still this like yeah. big. Yeah, you know, I've I've told this story before, but I feel like it's been um it's been a while since I've reflected on it. And so um I love that I get to kind of speak on it again. Um uh, because I feel like over the years, as I've you know been a part of the game um, for now, as you say, seven years, yeah. Um, yeah, my thoughts and feelings on it evolve. And so, um, well, first of all, I wanted to ask why, what drew you to the game, and when you saw the trailer for you know Tracer and the and the beta and whatnot um, back then, what was it? What what drew you to it? Because I I had similar feelings too. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember. I think it was uh, when they when they when someone told me about the demo, and I was like, okay, I want to I want to try it out because everything looks like cartoonish, not cartoonish in the sense of Disney-ish, like. And I was like, this looks pretty cool, and I just tried it out. And after that, like, after playing that, like for three four hours, I just like was blown away with the way the game was. And then I saw some trailers, and I was like, this is like I'm watching an animated movie. And I, I'm just I was like completely into it with the characters and everything that they were kept on showing. And when they kept on releasing episodes and animated shorts for the characters and everything, I was like, wow, like I can just sit by and just watch everything as a whole movie. And everything would be like, it would give me all the feelings that I would get with any animated movie. And I just get ex excited and just like, I just, you know, go into the game, play for hours and hours. And I've made friends yeah. from that game as well. So it's been a, crazy journey for me yeah i mean very similar to you um except i ended up being you know in the game <laughs> yes um, which was you know a, an an absolute thrill and honor but i guess i'll just start from the beginning i received an audition from my agent and um there's such an evolution to this story but uh and she was originally sort of they kind of give you you know blizzard and a lot of these big projects they give you sort of more of a uh, a specific, but yet like not exact to the character um, mm -hmm. character description because they want to make sure to keep things confidential. So Hana Song was her name. They didn't say, I don't know if they said that she, her name was actually Diva just yet. Uh -huh. And she, they had said, um, you know, that she was like a K-pop star. And um, when I saw her lines, you know, for the audition, I just thought, oh my God, I know exactly who this is. <laughs> and those are the ones as an actor that are, it's just, pure goal because yeah. um oftentimes we want to do what the producer wants to see and we want to get an idea look at their past work and see you know maybe they want this kind of character done again in this movie or this yeah. television show or this video game or this animation but this one i was like i didn't even really care i i grew up with um friends you know of course i have girlfriends and boyfriends but guy friends but my guy friends were big StarCraft players. They were wow. huge into uh, video games. We have these, um, my Korean American friends, especially, you know, um, we have these things called PC bang, which is like back in the day, I don't even know if they have them anymore, but they're basically like rooms, like businesses set up where there's a bunch of computers and you go there and they're oh. open 24 hours and you, you play video games, right? Because yeah. A, you're, you are you can't really do that at home because you've got parents who are probably telling you you need to do your homework. Yeah. And also like the equipment and just the, um, the computer screens and like the hardware is just much uh, more advanced than these PC bongs. And so I would have friends that would play, you know, Blizzard games at um, in high school. And so I was familiar with the franchise, but wasn't, uh, sorry, not the franchise, but the company, but I wasn't, you know, obviously Overwatch, this was the first one of its kind it wasn't but you know later on i got to be a part of like starcraft 2 and i got to be a part of um you know heroes of the storm and 
franchises that I was uh, that have been around for longer, but this was the first go. So mm. I saw the beta at that point. I wasn't in the first. I think I was in the second round of Heroes that came out. So I saw the beta and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like what you said, a yeah. movie. And yeah. I thought that is so cool. Um, and that was really enough for me to be like, okay, I know exactly how I think Diva is supposed to be. And there's just this intrinsic sort of thing that happens sometimes, you know, in our minds and in our hearts as actors where we're like, we just know mm. the character as if like it was made for us. Yeah. So we, I do the audition. And in fact, at that point, I didn't even have a professional mic at home. I have, um, this is like going into another tangent about equipment and stuff like that. I have a <laughs> TLM 103, a Neumann, and I also have um, an Apogee mic. And, um, you know, both great mics, one is portable, the other one's professional grade equipment. And I didn't even have that. I believe I, I did the audition. Actually, maybe that one I did in the studio of my agent's office, but oh, wow. I, I only, do you remember, well, not do you remember, because everybody still has them, but like the air, bus, uh, air fo- um, earphones that yeah, have yeah. the little mic attached. I would just go underneath my blanket at, in my room and like be in that mic, but I'm sure it's peaking and everything wow. off the charts. And I would book video games. I would book all my, like my series regulars uh, on a lot of my shows that I've done. Um, because I was, you know, I just was like, I'm doing fine. I don't need to invest <laughs> in actual equipment. I don't know. It's a fluke. And this is why I believe in like, you know, fate in, in so many ways, because I, I of course tried hard, but I didn't even have the proper equipment. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, was, fortunate to um, be booking work that way and eventually I, I invested so of course now I have things but uh, you know to record um, properly but I, I recorded and then I go I, go, I got called back and um, in fact I, I yeah I got called back and I went into the studio um, that uh, Blizzard records in in LA and um, ended up um, uh, just trying to embody the character and dress as the character as much as possible how, you, how I envisioned her and went in and just felt um, like I knew her and so sure enough within I think two months or something it takes a long time voiceover auditions and the process of booking is a lot longer than and as well as animation than uh, movies and tv um, television and so um, I, by the time I got the call, they said, Hey, um, we have great news. You booked one of the lead roles in that video game, um, Overwatch. And there was no code name even on that one. And wow. I was like, which, which one? <laughs> it had been so long that I forgot. <laughs> so then I was like, Oh my God, thank you so much. Okay. And then I hang up and I'm like, on my computer, which one did I book? And I was like, Oh, it's the one that looks like a movie. And I was like, <laughs> so so excited about it and thus began the journey of being a part of the overwatch family um i then go and start recording and uh, it was really cool because um, i had done a lot of um japanese and i speak japanese and korean i'm trilingual Uh, my mom's japanese my dad's korean and that's my only claim to fame that i am fluent in both languages so a lot of my work previously as an actor was in japanese and then this was my first time being able to really mm-hmm. um, play a full-fledged Korean character. So that was really special for me. Um, and, you know, we recorded, then she got released. And, you know, meanwhile, I'm trying to build up my social media as an actor in general. And, you know, um, you know, had a few thousand uh, followers mm-hmm. and, um, you know, because it's a, it's a big part now, of, yeah, you know, fortunately definitely. and unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. um, social media and followings and those kinds of social capital it has so much to do, uh, you know, now with one acting career and any career, really, mm. right? And so I go and then I just decided, okay, it's time for me to tell everybody that I'm diva. I'm just going to put it out there on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and I'm just going to hashtag overwatch hashtag blizzard hashtag diva and in came the droves of people i had no idea like that it had already blown up so much in its beta phase and i was just incredibly overwhelmed with the love that came and as my character got released that year i was then invited to be a guest at blizzcon at at the first very first overwatch panel 
And that, of course, changed my life. It was 2,000 people in the room. And I, um, it was my first uh, experience as a public figure. And, you know, up until then, I was a working actor and I was, I was doing fine, but I was not, you know, known yet. Mm -hmm. And this really put, changed my life and put me on the map. Um, Fast forward, of course, throughout the seven years, I've been to over 50 states and countries and um, touring basically the world. I've been to Kuwait and I, you know, I've been to Glasgow, Scotland, and of course, like, you know, half, half the states in the United States and um, very, very honored and privileged to be representing such a diverse and um yeah wonderful game that i'm very proud of and um and and to be able to get the opportunity to meet the people that it has affected influenced and been um hopefully mostly encouraging to has been um a wonderful journey ah, that was a lot <laughs> that was a lot i love that I love every every second of it and you mentioned like BlizzCon and I know BlizzCon is like such a huge thing everybody goes in cosplaying and they want to see all these yeah. panels and all that stuff how has that been for you like I know you mentioned just like BlizzCon your first BlizzCon was insane 2000 yeah. people I mean I it must be I don't know like going to that stage and seeing all these people like it must be overwhelming to see those many people coming to you to I, see you I was shaking like a leaf and I'm actually you know whether it's because like I've been a performer my whole life or whatnot. I'm not, I don't usually get too nervous. Um, I sometimes get nervous, you know, before a big audition in person, because mm-hmm. you're in a room full of 20 strangers who are staring at you and they're like, perform, <laughs> you know? And it's like, oh, you know, so of course they're, and you just want everything to feel natural and real and whatnot. But this is a whole nother experience because mm-hmm. I've never been under, a watch, like the like not a watchful eye, but under the gaze of two thousand people yeah. waiting for you to speak because it's your voice that allowed them to get acquainted with you. And then on top of that, it became such an overnight sensation and mm. success that um, I didn't want to let people down. And I was just nervous. I was like shaking like a leaf. And then Fred Tatashore and Matt Mercer, who play Soldier Seventy Six and um, now Cassidy are, were in front of us and um, and in front of me, I should say, and they were very much, um, I just uh, bantering back and forth and, um, you know, just trying to make the time before we got on stage just fun and pleasant. And that really like sort of got me you know, a little bit warmed up. And then, <laughs> Fred, excuse me, Fred turned around. It, it, it's so like meta because like Fred turned around and he was like, you know, I just wanted to let you know that you're going to do a great job. And I, I, I'm proud of you for even, you for getting here, not even, but for, for getting here. And, you know, I'll be right next to you. He, he happened to be sitting next to me during signings and whatnot. And anytime I got nervous, he would um, you know, not that he would notice it was all internal, but he would mm. once in a while just check in with me and say, are you, are you doing all right? <laughs> you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. You know, um, I see, you know, the, the, the openness that you're, you're trying to show and, um, and you're, 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 you're doing, you're saying all the right things. And, you know, I, I was really encouraged. And ever since then, Papa 76, like really became like, you know, whether it's at conventions or, you know, other personal appearances or work, work things like he's just always been such a kind and encouraging father, uh, ish, you know, yeah. figure, um, to me, you know, throughout this journey. So yeah, it, it was an incredible experience, but kind of like going down the, um, <laughs> they call it the black diamond in, you know, ski terms, but, like they, it got. I just got thrown sort of down the the steepest slope, you know, with yeah. the exposure to the, um, you know, our our fans and community and Overwatch and um, ever after that, everything else sort of was a piece of cake. I was I was very much warmly welcomed, and I I felt comfortable, you know, going to all personal appearances after that and meeting the fans. Over the years, people have 
stayed with the game i myself have formed like a group of people from out of nowhere i'm uh, just playing just randomly and i just was able to make friends with like few people and then we got to play every single day that happened for a year or two and and so the community has grown so much and now we had overwatch 2 and you know few more changes here and there and few more additional <laughs> lines and stuff like that so how was it like coming back to overwatch 2 i know you had to work uh with i someone else as well just things change in the company overall so how was that you know surrounding yeah. life for you yeah you know it's uh, it's interesting um i i do want to share another story actually before i get i answer this question but um <clears throat> i um actually we'll get to that later uh it's been it, it it's been good you know um we do have a whole new writing team a whole new team of devs and leadership yeah. you know and i think with you know and i'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm not here to you know give a fluff interview um we've gone through a lot right like it and good and bad of course for what it you know the what it was the the controversies and mm -hmm. um i shouldn't even call them controversies they they're they're incidents that actually have happened you know yeah. internally um within the the dev team and and um or i should say within the company within blizzard the company and um and these unfortunate um incidents have then uh, lent itself to then change or, you know, an effort towards change. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we're fully there obviously yet. Yeah. And, um, I know personally of people who've experienced things within the company. I've experienced a few things within the company too. And, um, but efforts are being made to make things go in a better direction. And with that also comes, of course, the, changes within you know the dev team people also grow and move on it's mm -hmm. not always because there's anything personal against the game or the company but you know there are people who are, the people who made overwatch are incredible geniuses and talents you know we're talking about um arnold playing and we're talking about um michael chu and both are um you know lead one is an, an lead illustrator and the other one was the the head writer and um you know they're there uh making this game and of course when there are changes to that team it's an adjustment now we don't really experience that adjustment on the mm -hmm. daily because we don't you know work directly for blizzard but in a sense we do you know and really it's it's more during you know recordings and stuff that we have these interactions and it, it has been an adjustment you know it's a different game yeah and i miss I miss Overwatch one. <laughs> I do miss the original and yeah. I, I hear all the complaints and everything about Overwatch <laughs> two as well. And, you know, um, it feels different. I understand that, but I, I do think that they're, they have their ear to the ground and I have faith that it's, you know, going to continue to grow and, um, and be exciting. And, um, they're, they're you know, I think they're, that's why there is so much experimenting with different modes and mm. different, storylines and this getting scrapped and then being brought back in but we're hanging on and you know i i just went to my first appearance for personal appearance in washington state um a couple of months ago the first one i've had um since the pa pandemic because wow. um i've also i've also had a couple of babies during the pandemic and i just took a break because of all the risk and everything involved and um with you know health and stuff with with covid and um, I just went back and, and I, I am happy to report that I didn't get COVID and I didn't even get sick and it was such a wonderful experience. And, um, and a lot of the fans that came to see me are, uh, m much like yourself, tried and true Overwatch one fans, you know, mm -hmm. the original fans. And I was so thankful to have still been able to meet people, um, despite the fact that they're like, Hey, you know, what do you think about Overwatch 2? And I'm like, <laughs> I, think we'll get, I, think, I think we're working on it. And I, I can only be honest, right? Yeah. Like, uh, what am I, I'm not here to be like, it's the exact same thing as Overwatch 1. It's not, you know, the, the, it, it's just different, but mm. you know, it takes time. These things take time, you know, yeah. and just like there were, there were, um, 
bumps in the road for the original Overwatch and and um, the development of that and whatnot. I I'm I know that you know it's a it's a really meaningful franchise to um, Blizzard, and so I I'm they're not in the business of wanting to let anyone on anyone down. Is what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I mean you're right. Like I know like it's insane because when the game came out. Uh, I I was very happy that it all became free to play and now anybody can jump in and uh, there's these different kind of uh, things that they're trying to do and it was unfortunate when it came to this platform Steam and then it got like review bombed. People just went in and just had yeah. negative reviews over and over again. I'm like, you guys didn't play the game. Like, what are you what are you yeah. saying? Like, point like it was like point one hours like somebody played 30 minutes or 15 minutes and it was like worst game of all time like what you didn't play anything so i i got that like for some reason people wanted to be negative on a game without even playing it and i it, it was kind of like frustrating to to see like a game that people loved so much came down to this where people are just review bombing for no reason um but i, I understand in some ways as well but i'm i'm happy that still regardless of whatever pe- whatever people are typing on with the keyboards on putting out reviews out i think the game still yeah. did pretty well i really enjoyed all the new lines for every single characters some of the redesign of the skins and everything and how the game overall yeah. looks looks pretty cool and i know skins as in for diva as well just like there's so many incredible looking scenes do you have like did you get to see any of the skins or do you have something like a favorite of yours or something that you think oh like, my was gosh mind blowing yeah I I mean I've always loved um Hegoki, which is like the the um the the Korean flag one. Yeah. Um that one and um yeah, in Overwatch too there oh gosh, I had just answered the question, you know, at at the convention and I'm like kind of um blanking right now, but I, I like anything that incorporates like when the mecha looks like uh, anything that incorporates like um, the Korean culture, uh, because I think that there's sense. so many, yeah, there's yeah. some, you know, there's um, like I, there's like the EDM one that I thought looked really cool too. Yeah, and, I love that. You know, there's so many good ones in Overwatch too, but then I just like the ones that teach some teach the audience about culture because mm. um, I just think that you know. That's part of the appeal for, I think, this this game. It was sort of the first time I've seen so much diversity yeah. and um, representation of different body shapes and people, you know, different skin colors and sexual orientations and, you know, just something that isn't really talked about in video mm-hmm. games. And so, yeah, I, I, I like any of the skins that incorporate her Korean culture and also just just the ones that are cool (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean there's there's so many skins and i love i just love checking through skins and like which ones because whenever i get into a match i gotta change the skin like this that last one i did this this round i'm gonna go with something else and it's just like a whole thing and i'm I'm like unlocking skins and buying stuff i'm like what am i doing i need to stop what's Um, your favorite one oh man that's very hard to even pick out one favorite uh I don't remember the names, but I usually love when yeah. um, uh, there's like some. I think a black. I'm not. I'm remember. I don't, don't remember the names, but there was like a black skin. Like the mecha was completely black. I'm not so sure how diva was exactly, but I love the glossy black Burn. kind of dark texture when it comes there. I love that because when I just love the mecha because it looks so cool and so classy. I'm just like that kind of a guy who just loves the shiny dark uh color or texture and stuff like that so if any of those yeah. are available uh if i have enough that i need to get one i'll get those and i'll go with that i just love that yeah <laughs> i do think that they did a great job in um in her skin for the you know overwatch 2 yeah. I, I think that they took it to the next level and yeah so i i agree they and and yeah, that that they they just look awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, I love I love that as well. And and speaking of like skins, I know you know uh, playing the game itself is is very. There's a lot of insane people who played very well and stuff like that. Did you get to like play the game yourself? Uh, yeah. So Overwatch One, I was um, the original. I um, I played a lot of because. Well, first of all, my husband ended up getting sort of addicted to it, as people do, right? And so 
and he's a big uh he's a junk rap fan he was playing moira for a while um i started off as a roadhog oh fan. no way um, that's so cool yeah because you know a lot of people pick who i think they feel i don't know either that is easy for them to play or like i i've met this is random but i've met so many people who are like you know what's really easy for me is Genji. Genji, are you crazy? <laughs> like, it's so difficult. But then they're like, oh, but I, I, you know, Diva's too hard. I'm like, okay, so people have different skill sets and, yeah. you know, outcomes. And for me, I I just like Roadhog because when somebody was um, introduced, I, I eventually, um, you know, played on a PlayStation, but I, you know, I, everyone always asks me PC or, you know, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I want a console. Um, but I, my first time playing, my first couple of times playing was on a PC and, um, my friend who was showing me, um, cause he was already playing the beta, um, was like, Oh, I think you'll like Roadhog. And like the, the, the sort of ironing behind that is, I think that one of the charms of the game is being able to pick characters that you don't look like and mm. are are not representative of you in real life, but maybe yeah. you feel like that on the inside. I'm like, oh, I I feel like a big pig on the inside. <laughs> 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 I love food. I love eating. I love you know. I, I feel like I have a big burly presence in my heart, and so <laughs> and um and I also like uh, love um the voice actor Josh who oh yeah um who plays um who who plays Roadhog. He's a real, real nice guy. Um I love his taste in music. He's a father. He he's a cool guy. So um it all sort of, you know, came together with that. Or I should say that's how it all began. And then eventually, um I then after BlizzCon I, I went to my first personal appearance where I was, you know, invited to go somewhere else. I was flown out to go to San Francisco for KrakenCon lovely um like family size con and um it was good because it wasn't you know eventually i don't know if you're familiar with american cons but you know like there's of course like the bigger ones like in c2 like c2e2 in chicago and new york comic con in new york Mm -hmm. and san diego comic con all of these cons i kind of grew into later and i i went to as a guest later to I think I would have been so overwhelmed if I began with some of these huge, oh, you know, yeah. cons. But um, I, I began with this small appearance. It was my very first invitation. And I went and um, I was in the audience. This is funny now because, of course, I'm very well versed in the game now. But seven years ago, this was not funny to the audience. But um, <laughs> they were like, you know, I had my, um, I had a good size audience. Like, you know, I, I would say at least a couple hundred people showed up to hear me speak and I was like you know I still hadn't played the game at that point I hadn't done my roadhog (laughs) experience at that point I was just introduced basically to the world after the game had you know my character had come out Mm -hmm. after DB came out so I didn't have the experience yet and they were asking me all these questions about the game and I had no clue like I had no clue what I was getting myself into and they had said um say your alt <laughs> say your alt and like they're shouting this to me from the audience and i was like alt like alternative what and they're like no alt and i was like alt 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 i couldn't understand they're like yeah. your ultimate and i was like what is my ultimate and then they were like oh and they were so frustrated they're like no this and i was like oh okay here we go. Nerf this. And then they were like, Wah! and I was like, what? Like, what? What is an ultimate? Like, I really didn't know. And I was like, yeah. okay, I got to play the game. I got to, I have to be a part of this in order to continue to do a good job <laughs> voicing her. So I, I, I called my friend. I was like, hey, I know you're already playing the game on PC. Can you, can you introduce the game to me? So I played a couple of times. Then I just ended up buying the game myself. I think it was at Target or something. Then I, you know, I, eventually they gave me a, a copy, an Xbox copy, but I don't even own an Xbox. So that was, thank, <laughs> oh, no. thank you, Blizzard. Thank you, Blizzard, for that. But I bought my own copy, brought it home, and um, and began playing Diva. And thus began my journey of playing her as much as possible. And mm-hmm. then, I think it was three years after Overwatch, three or four years after Overwatch, you know, was birthed into the world. I birthed 
two children <laughs> back to back. <laughs> uh, and that really ended up taking so much of my time. And I haven't been, you know, able to play as much um, mm. raising my kids. And so um, I have, I have, I have a lot of catching up to do, but they're now yeah. beginning school. They're two and four years old. I've, I've been almost three, one of them is almost three. And so they, once they sort of get into, you know, once I really get them um, acclimated to school life and I get to kind of work back on, you know, work again on my mm. career more and, and have a little more time to myself, I'm definitely going to start playing again. <laughs> yeah, I, I could totally understand that yeah. uh, life happens and there's a lot of things you need to do. To be honest, play video games. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's cool that you mentioned like playing Roadhog and Roadhog is a character that I really, really love. I just, I have... I have had like around 170 hours playing that guy. And so I just love playing that that dude. And I'm like always complaining in, in my own, like to myself, like, why are they not doing anything to Roadhog? They need to do something. They need to make him give some more abilities <laughs> and stuff like that. Like he, he needs more skins. Yeah. Like what is happening? So I'm like always in that mode. But I love Roadhog. And, you know, play, playing that game is something that I, I really, really enjoy. So if something, if I'm not in a good mood or something like that, I would hop into the game and have some fun time. And I know there's some people like just say some weird stuff and just go ahead and just go insanely. I'm like, guys, calm <sighs> down. Like, yeah. Just... Yeah. I, you know, I think toxicity and male toxicity, honestly, and in yeah. video gaming is a common thing. And it's been like that since the beginning of time. It's, you know, but I wish I could say that the, you know, I, I feel like when Diva first came out, there was this sort of movement of like, you know, feminism and the female participation and, and place mm -hmm. in gaming, you know, was strengthened, but there's just, I think when there's, when you're granted anonymity, you know, and you're behind a keyboard or you're behind, you know, you're not in real, real life, you know, so to speak. Um, sometimes it lends itself to, um, you know, what you said, the insanity yeah. and, um, but we just have to do our best to be against that and to not partake in it mm -hmm. and, and try. And I think my message, especially for female gamers, for women is to, um, just keep playing. And then if it's not good for your mental health, you got to get off, you yeah. know, and, and, um, not subject yourself to, um, just the, the, the silliness of, of toxicity. That's, mm -hmm. and it's not just for women. It's, it's in, I think in general, you know, yeah. it, there's a lot of, um, I'm just going to say it, it's like a lot of racism in, in video gaming and there's a lot of ableism and, yeah. um, ageism. There's all kinds of, of isms that, that go with gaming, but you know, we just, we just have to try our best to enjoy the games that we play and, mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of discourage, um, the, the toxic behavior. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that I always always do nowadays is I know that people in like the the voice chat, let's say, they're gonna have like they're gonna be racist or they're gonna be toxic most of the times. So I always make sure like if I'm playing a game like that that includes online people or that includes me playing with online uh, people, I just mute everything. And I was like, I know that there's gonna be some toxic comments. I would rather not hear that. I would rather not hear some kid shouting it's just like it's better to have that <laughs> off keep the game volume on and just go play that way and i know it's very hard for yeah. especially for, for as i said like for uh for um female gamers like they get hit on or they get you know stuff said all the time it, it, for any uh, any female gamer who's just say hi on voice chat everybody goes crazy and then it just a lot of stuff happens and it's just not a fun place to be on so i i, I would usually yeah. go ahead and like just mute all that stuff if it's too much. Otherwise, you don't have to be partake in voice chat and you know com communicate with everybody else on voice chat because sometimes it can be really hard. I went over to um, my friend, um, my friend who's also a voice actor, um, a male voice actor, house because he was playing Overwatch and um, he's like, "Hey, do you want to play Overwatch?" and and just go on the on the voice chat and like kind of like surprise people. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, sure. So I went on and then I was like, hi, app. And people were like, 
shut the fuck up and i'm like whoa <laughs> like you're actually talking to diva but like okay i didn't say that yeah, yeah. but i was like um i think i might have eventually said um hey like uh, you know it's it's like diva or something and i i started saying like nerf this and mecca activated and i was doing all the voices and then in came like an influx of just being cursed at and uh, yeah. um like vile sort of um very um gosh i don't know very sexual comment mm. being made at me and i think yeah, you know, to this day i don't think they really realize that they this beloved game and the character this beloved character that they love so much like the actual voice you know actor came on and then they were like cussing me out and <laughs> saying you know very horrible horrible things and you know very yeah, like just horrible things to me. And so I, it like, you know, and then so my friend was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you experienced that. Like, it's kind of like that. And they obviously don't know that you are actually diva. And yeah. so I, I'm so sorry. And um, which by the way, like, obviously I'm not actually diva, but he meant like the voice, the voice yeah. actor for diva. And I, he felt so sorry, but I really appreciated the experience because I, have the like not the luxury but the I guess yeah the luxury and the privilege of knowing like well like I can log out whenever I want I'm mm -hmm. still going to be diva I'm not going to be excluded from the game by any means but and also just to be able to experience toxicity firsthand I think you know to say like oh yeah it's so bad and like oh blah 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 just because you hear things doesn't mean that you are experiencing it and so of course I would have rather not had that experience but i think it happened for a reason so that i can understand firsthand just even by a like a snippet of like what what it's like to be a girl gamer you yeah. know in in what i thought was a game that shouldn't warrant that kind of toxicity and so yeah i'm pretty honest about that and i always tell um my audiences and at panels and whatnot too that i am I am aware of what it's like because I experienced it myself. And, um, and I think that you can always, uh, do good and not do good. I should say it sounds like that sounds like toxic positivity, but <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, just be positive, you know, like I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to say that, but I'm, I, what I was trying to say is like, I'm trying to make the best of even some of the negative experiences I've had. And, you know, I, God, I, I'm so, I'm so proud of the game in so many ways. And so I, you know, another thing that just comes to mind, which is sort of off topic, but it, you know, it has no actual blood, like mm. tons of fun kill killing. <laughs> We're <laughs> yeah. allowed to say that, mm. but there's no blood in the game. Yeah. And that's, that was something that I was so marvel. Like, I was like, what? That's like, that's marvelous. Like it, that way younger audiences can play. Mm. Yeah. And yet, it's just as exciting for adults and yet you don't see a single drop of blood like that is so unusual for a video game so i thought that was kind of um innovative yeah yeah definitely yeah that that is something that is some, an interesting addition that i thought that uh, okay definitely games will have that kind of like and and you mentioning like you know uh being in touch with his voice actors and there's like diverse cast of actors in this game like how yeah. how is that relationship with those actors over the years been like for you like you've been working with this game for so long uh, i'm sure you can you must have met for like other voice actors as well who have been part of this game yeah it's wild you know at this point so i think at the point of like 23 heroes i had known all of them like i'd met them at BlizzCon or i'd met them at a convention i had uh, i'd met widowmaker um in um Bahrain I had met you know like we're and we're all over the world too mm -hmm. it's not just in the United States yeah. um you know uh we have actors in the UK and in Japan and New York and California there's so many it's like it's just every we're all we're everywhere and <laughs> I it's been amazing we have um everybody is kind and hardworking in in the sense where um they do their best to represent um blizzard and the game um in in a way that um, makes all of us proud every I, I i have become quite close to especially some of the um you know actors that are here in los angeles and 
I'm even going to see um, Johnny this Friday. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, Johnny Cruz, who plays Lucio. And um, yeah, some of these people have become such huge parts of my life. And it's not even in like the professional way. Mm-hmm. Like we we don't even really, we've gone sort of beyond that and don't even relate to each other just based on the game. There's mm-hmm. just where we talk to each other about life or our relationships, our families, our, our mental health, our, you know, what exercises we're doing. Like, you know, just like they've become, some of them have become like family to me. And so um, I am so, so thankful because, you know, I think that um, it goes to show that just as the cast is the cast, as in like the, the characters, represent a wide range of people they've done a lot to try to do inclusive casting uh, blizzard has to try to make sure that you know that viva is also voiced by you know a korean actor yeah. or that you know so and so actually is voiced by a german actor or whatnot and so it also gave us the opportunity to meet each other in real life in a way that was um I think really that diversified our lives as well in mm-hmm. real life, right? Yeah. Because it's such a diverse cast. And so I'm so thankful for that because I've learned, um, you know, so much from um, the back, the different backgrounds of the other actors and, mm-hmm. and the, and the cultural exposure that I've, you know, ha- I've had the privilege of um, having. If I had the opportunity, I would love to talk to anybody and Matthew Mercer first, uh, because like it's like uh, I just love what they have done, what they have created, and they have done it so well. And I, I was one like ever since been a fan of Overwatch, I would you know watch like panels and cons and whatever recordings if there's available yeah. on YouTube. I would love to watch because I love to know more about who these people are. And yeah, speaking of those videos that you have watched and whatnot, um, um. You know, first of all, thank you for being a part of that family and the community. And um, Johnny, speaking of Johnny, we actually, I think we're one of the first to be put on the map in terms of voice actors um, in such a huge and public way so quickly overnight. And it's we have Johnny Cruz to thank for that. And the reason is because he had made a video at, the Blizz, we have a Blizzard after party that's just for the cast and the devs um, where we do like autograph signings for the developers as well as just having lunch and, you know, viewing like the cinematics and stuff together. And it's like a thing that we did once a year mm-hmm. and they would give us like Blizzard swag bags with like different kinds of fun toys and cool things and stuff like that. And the first time I met him, like, I honestly, and he, he's one of my closest friends now, so I know that he's not going to be offended, but I thought he was so weird. <laughs> I was like, this guy is so weird. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's like, he comes up, he's like, yeah, uh, you know that uh, we're, we're shit or something. Like, and I was like, huh? <laughs> wait, wait, that was a little Barack Obama-ish. I'm, I'm not sure where that came from. But <laughs> anyway, John, Johnny, I'm not doing a good job of you, Johnny. Okay, sorry. I'm usually really much better. But anyway, he's like, oh, yeah, like, was shipped and I was like what's shipped again this is before I really got into the game and he's like well then you know they pair us together like Diva and you know like you know like well yeah. um, you know I'll, can I have your autograph and I was like huh <laughs> like you know like you're doing all the lines and I'm like okay so we're taking a like the, we took a, like a sort of an awkward picture side by side together and I'm and thus began this beautiful friendship and uh, he, I l- soon figured that he is absolutely delightful and um, I love him in all his weird glory. And um, he goes around and takes like this video, like he's like, hey, let's do a line together. And I, was, I very reluctantly, which <laughs> is so funny looking back because it changed my life, but I re- very reluctantly participated in this video that he's like, oh, I'm just going to like go around in character. And he's like, does his lines and then he, and then, um, you know, then the next, um, you know, actor, he'll go around and he spliced mm. it together, made a video, and then posted it on, I think, YouTube and Facebook and all this stuff. And it went viral within a week. And when I saw the video, I think it had, within a week, it had 500,000 views. 
Wow. And then it went to a million within the month. Like it was insane. And that's really what got the community excited because usually a video game is a video game and nobody really cares that much about who's voicing the game. It's different from like watching Game of Thrones where you see Sansa Stark and you're like, oh my goodness, who is the actress? Sophie Turner. Wow. Like you have these like emotional connections because you visually see the person and mm-hmm. it feels so real. It wasn't such, such, you know, it wasn't such was not the case with when it came to voice actors, but because Johnny had put that out there and connected the character to faces, people just loved it. And I, I really appreciated Johnny for doing that at the end of the day. And um, it really ultimately changed the trajectory of all of us. And Rolling Stones magazine um, had uh, done an interview um, with the cast and called us the Beatles of the video of the video game era. So, uh, uh, and there's something to be said about that now. I, you know, I, I, I do feel like we were sort of the first game um, to have put um, the cast in such a um, as such an integral part of the of the light and the characters. I eventually, you know, became as I as people started to be more exposed to me as a person. Like I love reviewing snacks. And I love like eating and stuff. And so then eventually very meta, they, the devs heard, you know, the rumblings of Diva being like a gremlin and then munching on Doritos and all of this. And then that eventually sort of made the lore of the game and, and, um, and sort of the, um, backstory of diva in real life uh, diva in real life we're all getting so mixed up i'm getting mixed up with <laughs> diva in the game and so um yeah i i just feel very fortunate to have been a part of um a game that was uh that allowed the actors to also share in the excitement ever since overwatch like how has it yes. changed your kind of like your acting career ever since that and i know you, you did get to do more games as well after after that so how has it been like ever since overwatch i mean it's you know it's funny because right before overwatch i was in um my very first lead was being a specialist i played a specialist named um sarah mm-hmm. in um call of duty black ops 3 yeah and i thought that was going to change my career and it did practically nothing <laughs> outside of paying me outside of Activision playing me. I, it didn't really not much. And so um, I cannot stress how much Overwatch has really affected my life and I'm sure career. I, you know, around the same time I had become a, my, I booked a couple of series regulars for the first time in my life. One was um, a series called Carmen San Diego on Netflix. I played a character named Julia Argent and then another series regular, um, later on um, for the Fast and Furious by Racers franchise cartoon on Netflix yeah. and later on, like DreamWorks. And it just sort of all happened at the same time. I was, I was doing only on camera maybe for the first 10, eight to 10 years of my life and um, only doing television and film. And um, when I was in high school, I would get this comment um, often I would be talking not even in like a really loud voice but I'd be talking in the hallway and a friend would turn around and be like I knew it was you <laughs> so I I've always been I was like oh there must be something about my voice that is uh marketable let's say <laughs> and so after you know you you, you do these you, you you work the grind as an actor doing like guest starring roles on television shows and you do this maybe two three times a year and it's just not enough to really make a healthy living without a side job. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I waited tables. I, I have an extensive background in like SATs and stuff. It's what my, what, you know, my, my family was a, a business was in. So I was tutoring. Um, I did odd end jobs. I was going to focus groups. I did so many things while become, you know, while trying to build my career as an actor. And I just thought, well, what can I do that's acting still, but I can make better money and, not be waiting tables and, you know, and, um, try to sort of develop a different arm of my, my acting career. Yeah. And I had looked for years and years and years for a representation and 
in voiceover. And actually, it's very difficult to find representation in voiceover. It's a small community. It's very niche. And um, people think, oh, like, I could totally do it. It's so easy. But yeah. I was able to step into Hollywood and get my first role on television as a guest star on a show called Cold Case on CBS within three out, three months of entering the business, stepping foot into Hollywood. It took me, gosh, at least five or six years to find my first representative, first agent wow. to represent me in voiceover, and then another couple of years to find success in it. So eventually when it all started happening, whether it's my series that I, the several series that I booked, you know, as a regular or as a lead in these video games, it all started kind of, com- kind of coming together. And then, you know, um, of course I still audition for things, but um, that's when the offers um, have started coming in you know that's when the offers started coming in and continue to come in and I'm very fortunate um to be able to um receive opportunities um uh, now that I have sort of um you know elbowed my way into the circle um but yeah I, it has it, it's changed a lot and um for me and the trajectory of my career and uh I feel very thankful for it and um yeah, I, this is a story that I wanted to tell at the beginning of our interview that now yeah. I, I think would be a great place to sort of um, uh, to to share. But I, growing up, um, the boys never asked me to play, mm. you know, their Blizzard games and their Maple stories and all the games that they, you know, you know, Tekken and Street Fighter 2 and all the all the games that they were playing. and one of my best friends and I, 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 I told him, you know, even recently that, Hey, I, I, I talk about you in my interview, but, <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I've actually said it on a recorded interview. So now it's going to be like canonized, but, um, <laughs> my, one, my, one of my best friends, Eric, um, from high school would go home after school and then work on our homework. And then he would be playing Tekken and he, would give me one of the controllers and he would basically make me do the blocking move (laughs) for an entire hour. Wow. And then he said, I'll I'll buy you lunch or dinner or whatever. So he goes and gets, you know, buys me Panda Express. And it's just (laughs) funny because he never thought to ask me, hey, do you want to play? But we were sparring in Tekken so that he can practice his moves on me so that when he plays with boys the other boys he could be good Mm, and it never dawned on me to even feel like asking if i can play for real and not just be doing the same blocking move over and over again it never dawned on me to even want to play because i just didn't feel like i was that was my role or place because he had already asked me to do that yeah so when i got this game it was such a full circle moment for me because whether it's feeling like the only character I can play in Street Fighter was Chun-Li when I really felt like a Ryu on the inside <laughs> or yeah. um, or Ken, you know, like I want, I didn't want to play Chun-Li all the time. Like mm. I, I wasn't really good at busting out that or whatever, the, you know, the spinning kick thing. Like I just, you know, like I wanted to be Ryu and not the second one. I wanted to be first player Ryu. Uh. And, you know, it was, the exclusion was was later on felt like I, I reflected on it. I was like, I loved playing video games too, but it wasn't really encouraged and it didn't really dawn on my friends who, you know, um, were just like, oh, just like walk, you know? <laughs> and so yeah. when I became a part of this game, it was sort of a full circle moment for me and it allowed me to be even prouder of being a part of a game that I would have formally in my in my younger days would have been excluded from but now I'm in the game and I don't stay in touch with you know any of those friends from high school those guy friends from high school but man (laughs) you know it's uh sometimes yeah it it was a sweet moment I would say and um and I I'm thankful for it I I think that the game in so many ways has given me a sense of confidence that I, you know, was always sort of struggling to have because I've always seen the attributes of my life as being disadvantages 
in 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 America, if I'm being honest, whether it's being a person of color, being Asian, being a woman, mm. I'm small. I'm five. I tell people I'm five three, but I'm actually five two and three quarters of an inch. Um, <laughs> being small, sounding young, looking young. These are all things that people, you know, they do a, a risk assessment and it's low risk. Should, I should say for most people, you know, it's like you just, I just felt like I was always at a disadvantage with these things, even though some people probably didn't see it that way themselves. And, but Diva being a woman, a person of color, small, young, sounding young, but yet you've got like big burly men playing her and, you know, or people just feeling like or seeing her as a hero and despite all these things that I saw to be things that were hurting me in life, really, you know, just turned it on its head for me and allowed me to sort of reconfigure the way I see things and to reevaluate and to, you know, people could say, no, no, these, those are great things about you, Charlotte, but you don't really feel that. And so therefore you can't just force yourself to change those things. Yeah. And, but it took a character that in turn I made, you know, I, I was part of the making of that showed me in my face as a reflection of um, power and strength and honor and, and uh, success and all those things that I found to be a disadvantage. I now have come to a place where I, I, um, I feel empowered in these attributes of, of, of myself. And so, yeah, once again, I'm so thankful for the, for the um, impact that the game has had on me and that I've seen um, have the positive aspects that it has had, uh, aspects of uh, the impact it has had on the community. And I just, I, I'm, I am honored to continue to play Diva. That's amazing, and I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that you get to be part of so many other games as well. And, and you mentioned like you're yeah. playing, um, like games in the past and stuff like that. I remember you were also part of this game called Twin Mirror. Uh, and uh, yes. how was, how was that experience like for you, like being part of that game? Oh, it was, it was great. Yeah, all, you know, all, all the games um, have a special place in my heart. A lot of times, the making of them, you know, ha like is memorable mm -hmm. and. Um, Twin Mirror was, um, I loved it because um, I am always trying to, you know, participate and in, in the efforts towards body positivity. And my character um, was um, a significantly larger woman and, you know, doesn't look like me in real life. And so I, that's another, you know, opportunity where I'm like, yeah, like I, I don't see a lot of representation of large Asian women in mm. media in general. So I was thrilled. I was like, dope. Like, I love it. <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, it's cool to just, be able to and that was Mazzola. she was a little bit of a darker character yeah. <laughs> I, she and um uh agents of mayhem was the other game that i was in that had a lot of cursing and <laughs> you know i i uh was a little bit uncomfortable with that but um i have actually in real life like a sailor's mouth i i i'm I go back and forth from like, it's just expression. It's just language to like, oh, I should really work on that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I'm cursing too much these days. Like, um, but um, so more of an adult game, obviously. But yeah, uh, yeah that was that was fun. And I, I got to record it here in sunny L.A. in a, in a cool home studio that um, the director has. Uh, I believe his name is Rob King. And so, yeah, that was a great experience. I. Um, I, I do want to share that um, it just announced recently, but because, and it's not actually a struck project, we're in a strike here in mm. currently in, in our union, uh, SAG AFTRA, but it's not a struck project, but out of respect, I haven't been doing a lot of advertisement on it and they've been holding off on 
marketing it until this guy gets over. Yeah. Um, but I think it's safe to say since it's actually not a struck project that I'm in, uh, I'm one of the four leads in a game um, called Toxic Commando. And oh. it's um, by Saber Entertainment um, and uh, helmed by John Carpenter, who is oh, wow. um, known for Halloween, the movie from back in the day yeah. and um, many other movies that he's done. And I really love working on that one. And I just feel like uh, this is the first character that they use my face and likeness to make a main character out of. Wow, and so, that's wonderful. Yeah, so you'll actually see somebody who resembles me. I don't know. I felt <laughs> like, oh, she's she's like a little bit different from me, but they use my face and likeness to draw this character. So wow. um, I hope, you know, you and your um, viewers um, will uh, enjoy playing that game when it gets released, I believe, next year. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That's exciting. I would love to try that game out and play that game out. Yeah, games like God of War and, uh, and and many other games, Last of Us and stuff like that, where their likeness is taken and they're resembled so much, and they immediately recognize who is who and whatnot. It's just it's amazing. So I, for me, I, I, I'm curious to know from you, like, what do you think, like, this evolution of kind of voice acting has been, according to you, like, yeah. over the years? You know, whether um, I don't know if this is like an AI specific question, but, I, you know, I'm all for technology and I feel like it's, you know, going to be very beneficial to um, but that's, you know, to to writers and actors, but mm -hmm. um, to a certain extent, but nothing I think really beats, excuse me. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> nothing beats real life. Mm -hmm. emotions and acting and even the mistakes that you see the fumbles that you see in words that yeah. are made you know that are spoken in um movies and television video games and animation like it's not nothing beats that so i just you know the the writers for example have been able to come to a positive place and agreement um with the amptp and i'm just hoping the same for actors you know because mm -hmm. the last thing we want to do is to is to not be able to make our art anymore yeah i think that that's incredibly sad if you let a machine just scan your face and then allow it to just do whatever you yeah. want with it you know so while i am a big proponent of excuse me of technological development i i also don't want to be able i don't want to be made to stop making movie magic as they say yeah so yeah yeah hopefully okay. we'll come to a place of agreement i mean uh so at, at the last thing i think i know like you've been doing so much work as an actor as well and uh, you know there's always people who want who, who would love to be part of video games in general let's say uh who would love to be a character and whatnot do you have any advice for those people who either want to be there or who are already in the journey and trying to get trying to book a good role or a lead role or, or any role in video game. Yeah. You know, um, you definitely have to be in, I have two pieces of, 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 of advice. You definitely have to be in sort of the epicenter of where video games are cast. So mm -hmm. whether that means that you're in New York or LA, if you're talking about American video games, you need to really be in one of the States. A lot of people are like, well, I'm in Dallas and there's like a voiceover community there. I'm in Chicago. Yes, this is true, and and you can. But when you when it comes to the big cast things and the opportunities, you really have to move out here if you want to become an actor. Whether it's a voice actor, and you have to commit to wanting to be an actor. It's hard, really, to say. I don't know anybody who's sort of um, half-assed mm -hmm. trying to pursue a career in voiceover or on camera acting, and like have been doing it out of. A, a, you know, a state that doesn't have um, a flourishing entertainment community. Yeah. And so commit to it. I think the commitment is a really big piece that people don't really talk about. They're just like, oh, you know, you could you could do it this way remotely or that way remotely, but I'm just going to be real and like just be upfront about the reality of opportunities being so far and few in between. It's going to take so much longer mm -hmm. if you don't make the move. And so, and of course, this isn't, this is specifically for actors, you know, um, 
we're not talking about artists and devs and stuff that, that, you know, that we have in other countries. Um, but when it comes to American video games, you have to be either in California or, you know, New York to, to pursue that. Um, and then when it comes to, let's say you're here, you're already doing it and you're just trying to book that big role. I think it's what I spoke about in, you know, spoke on at the beginning of our interview, the, I think it's being yourself which I still struggle with because the essence of who you are and how you imagine the character to be and who you, and the embodiment um, embodiment of your, the character in your eyes, from your heart and your mind is what's really going to book you that role. Mm. And that has been the case for me when it comes to the biggest roles that I've booked in animation and voiceover and particularly um, in diva. I really just, encourage people to not unnaturally get to a place of developing your character when you're auditioning, but really um, just trying to come from a place of, 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 of a natural connection Mm. and expression of who you think the character should be, not what they want it to be. And Sometimes you can change the producer's mind. They have this vision of who they think it's supposed to be, but you come in and you show them something much different, much more different and much more magical. Mm. And oftentimes that's the character who is going to, who the audience gets to see. It's not even who the producers originally thought the character was going to be. So um, those are, I think those are sort of more, macro pieces of of advice and other than that get good equipment get yourself out here and join us